4chan was created in 2003 by a 15 year old named Christopher Poole, who went by the online pseudonym Moot. It began as a simple image based bulletin board, where users could post and discuss pictures related to anime and manga. Ever since, it has grown into a sprawling online community, with boards dedicated to a wide variety of topics, from video games and music to politics and current events. One of the defining features of 4chan is its anonymity. Unlike other social media platforms, users don't have to create an account or provide any personal information in order to participate in discussions. This has made 4chan a breeding ground for controversial and often offensive content, as well as a breeding ground for internet memes and inside jokes. However, one topic, despite it being a huge rabbit hole, has been widely unknown. A cult that used 4chan to recruit members in real life. There is a 5GB RAW file filled with information about the cult, which was shared on Anon Files. And yes, I made a coverage on this topic already way back, but the video was quite lackluster in terms of quality and many people haven't seen it, so this will be a remake. I'm barely scratching the surface in this video, but I'll try to cover this forgotten piece of internet history as best as possible. The cult in question is called Cult of Saturn. Cult of Saturn has had some connections to Worlds.com, even though the 3D chat room didn't play a major role for this real life cult, at least according to my research. In the following section, I want to quickly summarize main aspects of Worlds.com with regard to Cult of Saturn. I just want to quickly address that I also upload numerous extended versions of the videos on this channel on my Patreon, along with exclusive content. If you're interested, it's just $2 per month and 10% off annually. If you enjoy the content, I'd really appreciate a sub, and let's dive into this. Before we start with the main part, I want to state that the Nexial stuff is obviously not real, but it has connections to the cult of Saturn, which is definitely a real life cult with ties to the internet, especially 4chan. Let's quickly refresh our memories of Nexialist and the supposed cult within Worlds.com. There was a certain user in Worlds.com who would look for people that were fairly active in order to recruit them. In Worlds.com you had a lot of freedom when it came to room creations. Nexialis used this opportunity to fill a room with satanic symbolism and graphic imagery. He would take this to a more disturbing level, sending players audio files of supposed screams of burning animals. Even though you can clearly see in these screenshots how it must have looked like, there are barely any rooms from Nexialis within Worlds.com since all of it was just a troll. Nexialis probably just set up the photos with his friends and wasn't actually building a cult from the ground up with random users. He probably even created the initial 4chan threads on the X-Files. Then there was another individual named Jimly. Jimly was an active user that also had followers. In order to join his rooms, you need to provide a mugshot of yourself. Jimly's rooms were filled with pictures of users, even explicit ones. There were also pictures of Jimly in the rooms. But as for Jimly, it really isn't a cult. It just seems to be some sort of strange fetish. There is nothing religious about it, it doesn't fulfill the criteria of a cult. We can pretty much summarize this entire segment by stating that neither Nexialis nor Jim Lee had a cult going for them. The first one is a troll, and the second one seems to be a strange fetish group. So is there anything else related to Worlds.com? Anything that truly can be considered a cult? Well, I managed to get my hands on a 5GB RAW file on Anonfast.com, filled with information. I haven't seen so many archive threads, pictures and audio files about one single topic in a long time. It's a gigantic rabbit hole and I'm willing to go through all of it. Welcome to the Cult of Saturn. Yeah. Yeah. Since we are dealing with the biggest rabbit hole there is, it actually should be pretty easy to find out when it started. 
A lot of people claim to know how it all started, but with the given information I gathered, this cult didn't even start on the internet. I will talk about this in more detail later on. For now, let's go with the official introduction of this cult, just for the sake of context. In the countless files of the raw file, I found a text file with a couple of links. One of them leads to hub pages, where an author named Tara claims to have been a part of the cult from the very beginning. She decided to share experiences over the course of a couple of years, and another individual named Richard provided the necessary research to write a coherent timeline of the events that happened. Clicking on the first provided image, we can read Tara's experience with the cult. I want to read out this one, but I will summarize the majority of posts to come, so it doesn't get tedious. Oh, so this first one by Tara won't really be relevant for the rest of the information, but I thought to kick off the video, we should start with her experience. Quote, My story starts when I met a guy called Christian McManus. Christian was this lovable, confused rebel type of guy who left a trail of angry girlfriends behind him. I think we had a mutual friend, and I wound up at a party in Finsbury Park that he was at. We dated for a bit, slept together a few times and sort of hung out. He was in a few grunge bands, and half connected to the hipster scene in East London. We used to hang around thrift shops in the middle of the afternoon, and he would tell me how substances had the power to open your third eye, and how all human affairs were linked to the planets and the stars, and how every culture had this archetype linked to the planet Saturn, and the symbolism of death and divorce as an essential part of life. I found it interesting, he never seemed like too much of a whack job. I should have known something was up with him back then, I guess. But he was my initial into this group who I became connected with. The start of the weirdness. Below, some of the warehouse parties I would hang with these guys. A lot of people recognizable in the story are here. Christian, Frank, Lucy and Daniel. Below the images, Richard, one of the two individuals that were investigating this, shows screenshots of the origins of the cult. In the screenshots provided, one individual talks about the urban legend, where you can contact an Antichrist figure named Frank through the email address falseprophet at live.com.au. He explains how he stumbled upon it on a production jobs website named manny.com. There was one job offer that had the following written on the subject line. Idle hands wanted for mysterious job. The job description was quite vague, but it said that a new magazine called The False Prophet was opening and they looked for creative people. After a few months, People who were recruited for the job talked about strange experiences they had with the job. The recruitment process was unorthodox and weird. Applicants would receive cryptic messages and the responses would be sent to other applicants, creating a strange scenario where applicants were in direct contact with each other without actually meeting the person or the recruiter. Now it is unknown if everything said by these people is true, but we'll get into this in more detail later on. Through this entire thing gaining more and more attention, things were fabricated, which makes it difficult to fully comprehend what actually happened. Anyway, the author of the thread talks about how his friend was a part of the cult and was asked to write a slanderous review about another applicant's work. Then, the same thing happened to him. An applicant wrote a slanderous review about his work. Finally, he apparently was given a phone number of that applicant and he was told to ring him up and destroy him psychologically if he wanted to get the job. He refused to do so because it was too disturbing for him. Now, this experience in itself is not proof of anything, but people were claiming that similar stuff happened to them. On Facebook and other blog posts, people were describing how they were invited to interviews at untypical hours, only to find out that no one was there or that cryptic symbols had been left behind. Other people claim that they entered a building in Old Street London for an interview, only to be locked in with the lights turned off and messed around with it psychologically. Further, they were given a map, and they needed to travel to different locations to draw parcels off. People were speculating as to why the recruiter would do all of this. They came up with the conclusion that this procedure is linked to the movie Donnie Darko, which is rather mysterious in nature, as far as I remember. I watched it a few years ago, and I remember that certain scenes had a lot of symbolism going on, and there were a lot of theories surrounding the movie. Anyway, if you navigate to a certain point on the website of Donnie Darko, you would see the message, to get to level 3, you must find the book of the key and the lock on your screen. There were probably multiple messages on how to get to level 2, but I couldn't find anything. Then some rumors started going around that if you contact Frank through his email, that you would be haunted down or whatever. I don't know why that made up stuff was circulating around, 
But through that, this entire thing became an urban legend, and most people forgot about it. So, is this it? Just some urban legend that people created? Well, I wouldn't make a video if it was this lame, and I would certainly not waste multiple weeks of research and investigation. There's more. There's actually way more. Let's dive into chapter 2. And for this chapter, it is important to mention that in the year 2012, there were huge debates going on whether the world will end or not. It was based off of the Mayan calendar, which you should be familiar with. Due to that, rumors and conspiracies were gaining more attention and hype than before. I'm mentioning all of this because it will maybe explain certain parts that will be discussed in the following. The Book of Key and Lock of Saturn is very hard to find online, even back then. There were 4chan threads of people asking for it, but others could just not provide it. People went out of the way to search for the book in most, if not all of the libraries in London, but without success. There was one page of the book circulating around the web, where some people claimed that this page here was a part of the Book of Key and Lock of Saturn. There was one person that uploaded a picture of that book. If this really is the book or not remains unknown. People look for this book even to this date in occult forums and online libraries. There was one person on 4chan that talked about the content of the book in detail, but there's no way to confirm his comments since barely, if any, claim the things he claims. More to this at the end of this chapter. In the raw file, there are a lot of things that could be related to the cult, but there is no definitive proof of it actually being related. X Fox is mentioned quite a bit of times, which was an open journal for people to post experiences of synchronicity. Synchronicity is defined as a meaningful occurrence of unrelated events with no casual relation. This thread eventually went from very casual things to ghost stories, occultism, etc., leaving Anon so stressed out by all of it that they went insane and seek psychological help. To what extent you want to believe all of this is up to you, but people make connections from these kind of threads to Cult of Saturn. One in particular is fairly interesting. On X Library, there was an individual named Attila that was associated with Frank and the Cult. The screenshot is maybe hard to read, but Attila mentioned the Book of Lock and Key and was accused of being a member of the Cult, but without any follow-up. Anyway, let's return to the hub pages and Terra's point of view. In one image post, she talks about her first encounter with Frank. She was a part of a small group of people who were performing occultism and she eventually realized that she is a part of a cult. An individual named Lucy introduced Tara to Frank Webster. Frank made a sociopathic impression to her and she also realized that Lucy was worshipping Frank. Frank was everything for Lucy. Lucy was also the first person that planned to take this cult online with viral marketing. If you do a bit of research on this, you can find pictures of Lucy and also 4chan threads from her, or at least posts mentioning her. But Terra often indicates that Frank was an alright guy, and the tasks he would give them were fun to do and rather casual. They were spraying the symbols on walls in London, and they went on the street in London and recruited 30 people in one day. No one really took it seriously with the exception of Lucy and Frank. One should keep in mind that this cult went through a lot of changes over the course of years. While what Terra describes are the initial stages of the cult in 2010, the cult went through a lot of changes when it became more and more online. Terra mentions that the cult had an anarchic party vibe, but this changed drastically even in less than two years. In 2012, the false prophet hype was really taking off. This must have been at the time when Frank and Lucy were doing their biggest viral promotions. You could find multiple forum posts in different languages talking about the websites. To spice things up, there was a countdown on the 21st of December 2012 from all over the world. The countdown was somehow connected to the idle hands. So this countdown served as a big recruiting chance for the cult, building up enough hype with the countdown, and in the end, people getting recruited. It's certainly a brilliant marketing scheme. People nowadays don't even put in that much amount of effort into their ARGs, which is quite a shame to be honest. Terra goes more into detail about the cult members and the cult itself. She talks about how it all started out as an ironic and fun group, but it always was spiritual. They talked about geometry, the flower of life, Greek gods and Saturnalia. She also claims to have eavesdropped a conversation from Frank and Lucy, where they were having a very serious conversation about how they could open portals and saying other cryptic stuff. The cult also got way more serious around this time. The cult would take over a couple of warehouses and would have guards and passwords to avoid intruders. 
The priorities within the cult also shifted, and Lucy started to create an ARG online. I also talked to a few individuals throughout my research, and they all were extremely convinced that this entire thing is just an ARG to promote Frank's work. But with the given context that I just presented, we know that this is not just an ARG. This indeed was a group that turned into a full cult and tried to expand online by pretending to be an ARG. Now we come to another key witness in this entire thing. There was one individual named Clay that was active in the time where this entire thing unfolded as an ARG. As you can see in the screenshots, he talks about how he and other people on the X-Files encountered the job ad that I mentioned in the beginning and how Frank gave them riddles, cryptic messages and instructions to do and solve. Here you can see the instructions and some of the symbols that people need to paint in various places. Here's even one example how it looked like in real life. Anyway, this happening on Fortune obviously caused some trolls to come out and meme the entire thing and screw with Frank, but we'll get into this in the next chapter. Clay got into contact with someone named Rabbit, who provided him with details and information about the book being real. Clay goes further and talks about how he got into contact with someone named The Other Lone Gun Man, who tried to expose the cult's activities, but then mysteriously disappeared. I'll just call him Lone from here on onward. Lone takes the clay and claimed that he got a key-shaped flash drive that was silver in color at a party. On it, there were three archive pull threads with a lot of nonsense. Clay obviously wanted to see the threads for himself, but Lone never emailed him back. Clay then sent a picture of the flash drive to Frank, not expecting him to respond, but Frank immediately hopped into the chat room and asked Clay where he got it from. He quickly realized that Clay doesn't actually know anything and left. There are still things we know about Lone. Lone would spend extensive hours trying to prove the existence of the original Idle Hands job ad. There were also 4chan threads circulating, talking about how Lone went missing forever after investigating Cult of Saturn. Fortunately, there was one user on 4chan that had some of the things that were in the flash drive on his computer. I'm just going to show all of the images that were provided by the user, but it's rather difficult to make sense of it. There probably is a deeper meaning to it, but it really doesn't matter for this video. However, in the recruitment phase in 2012 and 2013, there were Skype groups like this one. Keep this in mind for now, this will become relevant later on. While I couldn't find any info regarding the book's real existence and its content, I found something interesting in the raw file. There were numerous links to the keys related to the book. There was key number 1, key number 2, key number 2.5, key 3, key 4, and the last key named Stairway to Heaven. There's also one last link named You're in Hell. If you try to go on the websites, it will tell you that the content is either missing or that you don't have the permission to see it. I made an account on the website so I could sign in and have a look for myself. The website overall just seems to be a forum for alchemy and occult stuff. Nevertheless, there were things related to the book of Key and Locke and people were discussing it. I managed to find the one and only thread on the forum where this is even discussed to this date, which extremely surprised me because the cult vanished since 2012. Anyway, the thread contained the content of the first key, which were multiple riddles and questions. The user that wrote the post refers to other threads, which I didn't have access to or which I simply couldn't find. But this just goes to show that all of the keys most likely contain riddles and questions that would eventually lead to the two last keys. The stairway to heaven and you're in hell. What actually happens when you reach the two last keys is unknown since no one made it that far. I want to conclude this segment by stating that this thread is pretty much the only information we have regarding the book of key and lock. The other keys may also be on the forum but I was unable to find them. Interestingly enough, there is another cult tied into this. A cult strongly related if not even the opposition of cult of Saturn. To call the cult very unique would be an understatement. The cult is called the Cult of Mars. This will only be a very short chapter since there isn't a lot of information on this, but it is still relevant for this topic. Well, there's actually another group tied into this. They called themselves the Cult of Mars. They popped up in 2013 and were active mainly on 4chan. They would make a wanted poster of Frank Webster, create a card for him and their own cult leader named Marzipan, and even went so far to create this introductory page of Frank to just make fun of him. But there is not a whole lot more about this group. This pretty much happened in the time where Cult of Saturn almost disappeared. 
Cult of Mars was pretty much the finishing blow, so to say. Well, what happened to Cult of Saturn after 2013? Did they vanish, or did they just move on? Well, this is where Wallstar.com gets interesting. I mentioned Wallstar.com in the beginning already, and how it is tied with Cult of Saturn in one way or another. Archives of 4chan threads exist, where people claim to have messaged Nexialis to find White Rabbit, which was one of the few ARG elements of Cult of Saturn. Nexialis then told the user to check out a precise location, which I don't have any access to, since I cannot click on the picture that is provided within the archive, but this definitely seems very interesting. The location seems to be somewhere within worlds.com. With this knowledge, we pretty much now know that Cult of Saturn most likely also had rooms in worlds.com, which may be comparable to the ones that Nexialis had, or at least claims to have. Clay once more posted a 4chan thread which contained the current location of the cult back then. I'm sorry for the resolution on a lot of these screenshots, but I can only work with what was provided. I'll go ahead and read the entire thing out, because it is very important to the things that follow. Quote, have you guys played that weird Worlds game yet? I'm not too familiar, but I have a bit of a story to tell about my experience with it. If any of you remember me, you'll know that I nearly went insane on a search for this mysterious book, known as the Book of Key and Lock and how it was tied to this weird cult called the Cult of Saturn. They worship a black cube or something. It really freaked me out. This cult has started a few threats here on X. Well, in one of the threats, this cube thing the members of the cult were making had a picture of the book and then the word Nexialis under it. Curious, I decided to google the word and it's a user on the game. There are a few other folks who are searching for this book with me and they claim that this user seems familiar with the book. If you're interested in helping me discover a rare and hidden book of the occult that holds secrets to alchemy, demonology, and secrets of the universe, then help me on my quest and try to harass this Nexialis player. Find out what he knows. We can't let this chance pass us by. If I've piqued your interest but you have no idea what I'm talking about, keep this post alive. I'll give a more thorough explanation of the book and my troubles that I've had searching for it, along with everything else I know about. The book has some weird rituals that have been the cause of some big events and could end up causing the big event. Stick around, things are going to get interesting in this threat. Now, I don't know if this threat in particular was the reason as to why the Nexialis cult stuff blew up and went viral, but at the time of Clay making this post, Nexialis doesn't really seem to be a name that was associated with a whole lot. People on Fortune should definitely know who Nexialis is and this doesn't seem to be the case at the time of the post. Following this up, there were numerous posts made in the threads talking about Nexialis and the cult surrounding it, but Nexialis was obviously just a troll. But it's still interesting that the cult of Saturn shifted to Worlds.com in its lowest point of popularity. It seemed like the last desperate attempt of gaining attention, which was rather unsuccessful. Now I took it upon myself and wanted to check it out. Is there anything related to cult of Saturn in the 3D chat room Worlds.com? I decided to quickly create an account and download it. When you join worlds.com, you can only visit one server and one server only, called the world server. There you see the lobby with pretty much every user on the server. There are barely people still active in worlds, so it's very hard to gather information on there. When we look back into one of the text files that were available in the raw file, it clearly said that one should just join worlds.com and ask for Nexialis, Cult of Saturn, the Book of Key Unlock, etc to find out more about it. I know that the cult was defunct already, but I was optimistic. When I asked around, the users didn't really know what I was talking about and didn't really take it seriously. Now, I don't know if this is fake, but there was actually one user named Jim Lee on the server at the time. I talked about Jim Lee in the beginning of the video, but this is actually very interesting. At the time of recording, I didn't even realize that I was chatting with him. I was so focused on getting info on the cult that I was just not paying enough attention. So there might be even more to discover in worlds.com, even today. I don't know if Jim Lee still creates rooms, but he seems to be still active on the server. After questioning them for multiple minutes, one user told me that he exactly knows what I'm talking about. A Slenderman was one user that knew about Koto Saturn and I started to ask him a couple of questions. He said that he was not a member of the cult, but he knew of Frank Webster and was active during the time the cult was active online. He continued and told me that Frank didn't like him all that much. We then talked a bit about the Book of Key and Lock of Saturn and I tried to refresh his memory by giving him more examples and information, 
but I realized that he really didn't know as much as I hoped for. While we were discussing, someone named Timina joined the chat. Timina knew about the cult, and also told me that she talked with Frank before. Timina said that she was active during the hype of Cult of Saturn, which was around 2011, and that she was a member. Timina pretty much just states what was known at that point. That Frank is using this entire cult thing as an ARG to promote his magazine, and they as members would submit art and writing for it. I knew that she didn't know the entire story to it, but I kept on asking. Maybe she knew something that was not known before. Slonder and Timina talked about how the entire conversation with the cult happened in a Skype room. Their conversations were rather casual, but both of them say that Frank was an uncomfortable guy to talk to. Timina even called him a schizo, but alright guy, and Slonder had often arguments with him. They also shared a few anecdotes they had with the cult and Frank, which made them more trustworthy. But I obviously didn't know for certain if they were a part of the cult, and they also didn't provide any old chat logs. Timina and Slonder also stressed that Frank's book never existed, and it was just made up to push the narrative. Timina later sent me some drawings she made for the cult, but that was about it with Walls.com. Now, Timina gave me her Discord, and we started texting there. She talked about her perspective. Timina talked about how she discovered the cult through 4chan and emailed Frank in order to be accepted. She then joined a Skype group with others, and they got cryptic messages and tasks, which then later turned into a creative chill group, where everybody would draw or write stuff that would later be posted on the false prophet website, Frank's magazine. She gave me some links here and there showing that Frank was even active in 2016, even though the cult had long dissolved. She showed me Frank's Deviant Art account, which now has been deactivated. I also got Frank's current YouTube channel, which is linked to his Deviant Art account. Timina also gave me some more links and posted a big pile of dumping logs to prove that Cult of Saturn was nothing more than this. But we already established in this video that Cult of Saturn is way more than just a drawing and writing group before it turned into an ARG. Anyway, we talked about how Frank maybe didn't know how to handle a bigger following and thus dissolved the cult, which makes a lot of sense. She also talked more about her experiences. She explained how they got rings for participating within the group. There was a list that reads the following. Tasks that automatically qualify for a ring bonus. Produce content. Funny article. Short story. Review. Celebrity letter. 2. Find worthy content which can be used or remade into something better. For example from Reddit, 4chan, or find a funny blog. 3. Track down or recruit a funny blog writer. Find someone talented to contribute to false profit. 4. Prove that you increase false profit readership. Marketing. Make false profits link go viral. 5. Find 5 competitor links. Any site that has satire, comedy writing, short fiction or creative content. And stuff like this obviously discredits the entire thing as a cult immediately, which gives me the impression that Frank just didn't really understand how to lead a cult with a larger following successfully. All in all, through Tamina and Slenderman, we got a different perspective to this entire topic. We got the perspective of the people that stumbled across this cult, what was seemingly only an ARG, and this greatly differs from Terra's and Rich's narrative. This information that I gather through research and interviewing former cult members helps us to understand how Frank functioned and worked as a cult leader, and allows us to see this topic in a bigger frame. Even though I covered a lot of things that were available, there are still so many things to look into and so much information out there. I don't have the answers to a lot of questions, but what I gathered from all of this is that there was an occult cult back in 2010 to 2012, which started off as a group of people to hang out with and turned into a full-fledged cult, which used the internet and the concept of ARGs to become more popular and recruit more people. This definitely backfired because a lot of 4chan users memed the entire thing and trolled Frank and his cult, resulting in the cult's downfall. I can't confirm if the things that were claimed by cult members are true or not, since there is no real evidence except of their own experiences, but they sound authentic. I don't know if the Book of Key and Lock of Saturn ever existed, but it's likely that it did not exist even though numerous fortune users claim to have possessed or seen it. Overall, Cult of Saturn is a piece of internet history that was forgotten for the most part, even though it is certainly the biggest rabbit hole on the internet I know of. I also made a video on 10 of the most disturbing 4chan posts. Click here to see it.